On June of 1973, a 332-room Howard Johnson's Motor Lodge suddenly appeared off of the Las Vegas Strip near the Tropicana Hotel and Casino. This small motor lodge cost $8 million to build and was developed by Paul Austerl. Just a year later, the property was able to have its own gaming license and a total of 150 slot machines were added. However, in September of 1974, Osterl had declared bankruptcy, mainly due to him not being able to pay the hotel and casino's debts. Because of this, he had the hotel's ownership swapped to Eureka, a federal savings and loan company based in California. In 1975, Eureka decided to sell the Howard Johnsons to a former owner of the Riviera, Bernard Nemirov, for $10 million. Now owning it, he decided to rename the hotel and casino to the Paradise Hotel, reopening it in 1976. And this, just this, was the start of a period where the property would later hold a total of nine names over the years. In June of 1976, the Paradise was credit scammed by a whopping 54 mobsters who were associated with the Philadelphia crime family. After that, the hotel and casino was forced to close down to the severe loss in money from the scam and declaring bankruptcy for the second time in the property's history. It was then purchased by Andrew DeLillo, a businessman from New York in 1977. There, he renamed it to the 20th century, renovating it away from the Howard Johnson ambience that it had ever since it opened. He then sold it to Herb Pastor, who was previously known for owning the Coin Castle and Golden Goose Casinos in Fremont Street, then naming it to the Treasury Hotel, in which another renovation took place, replacing the sign and adding in a bunch of these showgirl statues all over the parking lot. Another purchase took place in 1982, which was from Gary Philbin, a former football player with $20 million. The casino sadly closed after that due to Philbin not being able to own a gaming license, and by the end of the year, he had almost forced the hotel to declare bankruptcy for the third time. In 1985, the DeLillo family was able to buy the treasury again, and this time, he had named it to the Pacifica. Now this is where things get a bit interesting, as they decided to market the hotel tours that's right, the LGBTQ community, but mainly towards gay travelers. Of course, considering this was in the 80s, there was a heavy amount of backlash, and since then the hotel has removed that strategy. On the same year later, they completely renovated the hotel again, giving it a bit of a Hawaiian theme and changing its name to the Polynesian Hotel, complete with lots of scenery and plants. It lasted for a few years, until 1989 when a Japanese industrialist by the name of Tsukiyaki Izumi bought the hotel, added the casino again, changed the theme to an Italian Riviera, and changed its name once again to the Hotel San Remo. It expanded in the late 1990s, adding a new hotel tower, more casino space, and a larger pool. Finally, there was a break in name changing, as the hotel continued to operate without any problems. In fact, it actually began getting some popularity with people who wanted a simple budget price hotel and casino. That was all until 2004, when Uzumi's company, the Eastern and Western Hotel Corporation, began looking for ways to grow the hotel and make it more popular than ever. And with that, Hooters, out of all companies, approached them and proposed a remodeling concept. They accepted it, and on February 2, 2006, the San Remo was no more and was now the Hooters Casino Hotel. They renovated it, giving it a South Seas theme, and of course, put a Hooters restaurant in the middle of the casino. However, something bad was looming over in the distance. Something from the past. Suddenly, starting in 2007, the revenue of the hotel and casino began declining severely. At that point, it became the lowest profited casino in Las Vegas at the time. This could have been due to the economic recession of 2008. It would eventually go back up in revenue, but it took a long time. It was later sold to Trinity Hotel Investors in 2015, and things were finally back in track. Finally, in August of 2019, a rising hotel chain named Oyo Rooms, meaning on your own, had decided to buy out the Hooters Casino Resort for $135 million. They began renovation later on, by the end of the year, all remnants of the Hooters brand was diminished, except for the Hooters restaurant, which is still around today. 
And that, my friends, is the end of the identity crisis for this hotel and casino for now. It's so weird seeing how many times this one off-strip property has renamed itself throughout the decades, but it's still pretty cool seeing how it has changed over the years, from a generic Howard Johnson Studio Italian Riviera to even one based off of a Hot Wings restaurant. With personalized service, charming guest rooms, fabulous restaurants, exciting casino, and thrilling entertainment, Hotel San Remo exemplifies Las Vegas variety at its best. We look forward to your arrival and trust that you'll discover firsthand that we truly deliver service you can bet on.